What's up guys? It's Marissa. I'm back for another booktube video and today I'm going to be doing my July wrap up. So during the month of July I read 19 books which is like holy crap. I cannot believe I read that many books. And I actually ended up DNFing two books during the month. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start off with the books that I DNFed and then I'm going to go from my least favorite books up to my most favorite books of the month. So here we go. The first one is The Merciless by Daniel Vega. And this one, I literally only got like five pages into this and I was like, they just ripped a scene from Mean Girls. And I was done. I was just like, no, I'm not even, I can't even do this. I picked this up at, the, at a secondhand bookstore, so honestly, I really don't care. I'm DNFing it, getting rid of it. I just threw that on the floor. So the second one is Gorgeous by Paul Rudnick. And this one I actually got almost 100 pages into it before I decided to DNF it. And it's basically about this girl who gets contacted right after her mother dies, right after she turns 18. And she's kind of a homely looking girl. And this really famous guy contacts her and is like, I'm going to make you three dresses and I'm going to make you the most beautiful woman in the world. And we're not talking makeover. We're not talking plastic surgery. We're not talking, you know, weight loss, yada, yada, yada. We're talking literally like magic. Once she put the, puts this first dress on she's like the most gorgeous creature in the world okay number one in a hundred pages it felt like it was almost the end of the book like so much stuff just happened in like rapid succession and I don't know I was just bored and it was too I don't know it was just too superficial for me like I don't I don't really care about that stuff. So instead of continuing to read this book that made me want to pull my hair out, I just DNF'd it. Now I'm on to my two star reads and I had two two star reads during the month. The first one <laughs> was City of Fallen Angels by Cassandra Clare. And you know what? I am a big fan of the Mortal Instruments series and the um, Dark Artifices series and this book just didn't do it for me. This was like, this was like the book in the middle of the series that like nothing really happens in. So I just didn't, I didn't really enjoy it as much as I enjoy the other ones. Most of the other ones I've given either four or five stars and this one, it just didn't hit the mark for me. It was like, okay, we probably could have done without this entire book in the series and just like only had five. So that's why that one's on there. My other two star read was Slumber by Becky Bird. And this one, I will forewarn you, this one was a Kindle arc that I got off of NetGalley. So I I did receive this for free and in return for my honest opinion on the book and this one I gave a solid two stars. I I literally did not like this book. Um, I just thought the action went by too fast and there was it was supposed to be a story story retelling a fairy tale retelling of Sleeping Beauty and Sleeping Beauty wasn't even the main character. Her prince wasn't even the main character. It was two other characters that were the main characters. And Sleeping Beauty was kind of portrayed as like this idiot throughout the whole thing. Like, ah, oh, I'm just beautiful and that's all I need to be because I'm a princess. And like, at some point she proves that she's really self-aware because she knows that about herself. But like, girl. Please, you are literally the type of woman who gives every other woman a bad friggin' name. So, anyway, it just, the book just irritated me. I mean, I, I didn't leave it a very good review on Goodreads. So, two stars, that is about the most I'm willing to give because one, the author finished the book, and two, the writing was halfway decent. There were a lot of grammatical errors in there, which I hope to God that they fixed before they actually published this book. So... I'm just going to say that. So now we're on to my three star reads. Three. Okay. So I'm going to lump these two in together. It is the Harry Potter, A Journey Through Charms and Defense Against the Dark Arts and Harry Potter, A Journey Through Potions and Herbology. I gave these three because they were well written, but they weren't... I don't understand why the hell they're even a part of the Harry Potter universe because literally it's like 
they're taking modern day or not even modern day they're taking real history and comparing it to Harry Potter in a book that is $2.99 a piece and I'm like okay so I just paid $2.99 for a Kindle book that literally took me about an hour to read and it was not a Harry Potter-esque thing. I did a whole review on this if anybody wants to go check it out. So yeah, did not enjoy those very much. I gave them three stars just because they were well written, well researched, but just uh, they should not have been a part of the Harry Potter universe. So anyway, that's my gripe for today. So the next one was a Kindle book, which is Allegiant, which is the Divergent number three, and I gave that three stars as well. I don't like the last book as well as I like the first two in the series, um, just because I think it, it just adds a whole new level of drama that doesn't, I mean, it kind of correlates to the first two books, but not really. So I just didn't really enjoy that as much as I enjoyed the other two. Plus, this is not my my favorite dystopian you know, fantasy book, I guess. So, yeah. The next one was Proof of Love, which I listened to on Audible. That one's by Chisa Hutchinson. That I also gave three stars, and it's about this woman who, her husband was in a car accident, and basically he's laying in the hospital in a coma, and she finds out he's been cheating on her for like seven years or something. So, it's, it was good, and I thought the, that the actress who did the Audible version was did it really, really well. I mean, her voice acting was superb. But the whole story just doesn't have a conclusion to it. It's like, oh, okay, my husband's cheating, and then, like, done. Like, you get some backstory and whatnot, but just, it's done. There's, like, no resolution. There's no, does he wake up and she confronts him? There's nothing like that. So, while I thought it was decent, it could have been a lot better than it was. So then the next one is Earthly Joys by Philippa Gregory. Again, I did a whole review on this one. And Philippa Gregory is one of my very favorite historical fiction authors, but this book just did not hit the mark for me at all. It was about a gardener. Number one, like I said before, I kill plants, so I don't really relate to the whole gardening aspect of it. And it, I just thought the guy was pretty much like a sycophantic glutton for punishment during the whole thing. And it, he just kind of annoyed me. So, I mean, I gave it three stars just because, again, it was a very well-written book, a very well-researched, very well-thought-out. But it just didn't hit the mark for me as far as enjoyability goes. So then the next one is The Wife Between Us. And I actually have to film a review video for this one. So... This one is by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekanen, and I thought, honestly, I thought 90% of this book was a direct ripoff of The Girl on the Train, to be completely honest with you. Um, it's basically from the perspective of the wife and then the new wife and the old wife is going after the new wife and the old wife is an alcoholic and then the husband comes into suspicion for some stuff and it's just, I literally thought this was a direct ripoff of the girl on the train. No joke. And it's really annoying. It was very well written. There was a couple of twists in there. You know, as, of course, a suspense novel is supposed to do. But I just thought, why did I waste my time on this? I already read The Girl on the Drain. So, anyway, you know, it, it's, it's definitely a three-star read for me. All right, so now on to my four-star reviews. So, my first one is Scythe by Neil Schusterman. And... This one, I gave a four stars just because, I didn't give it a five stars because the romance aspect of it, there either should have been a little bit more of it fleshed out or there shouldn't have been any in it at all. But otherwise, I absolutely adore this book. I love the hell out of this book. Neil Schusterman threw something at you that you literally have not gotten anywhere else so far. Who knows? People are probably going to end up falling in his footsteps after this series. But it was it's a really, really, really good book. So, four stars for that one. The next one is The Wrath and the Dawn, and of course, The Rose and the Dagger. Now, I will start out by saying, and these are by Renee Adier, 
And I will start out by saying that these books were definitely really good. I do think they're, well, they're a Thousand and One Nights story retelling, essentially. And you're following Scheherazade and, you know, the king and yada, yada, yada. So, also did a review on The Wrath and the Dawn. Anyway, so basically I thought this was more of a romance tale than it was an action tale, but the action was still good in it. There was just a limited amount of it. Most of it was just about the romance, romantical aspect of it, which is fine. Um, I just would have liked to see a lot more action in it than the romance because I'm just not partial to romance. So that's just a personal preference and that's why I rated them four stars. And I know a lot of people really loved these books. And I mean, seriously, these covers are absolutely 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 gorgeous just both of them are so yeah don't hesitate to pick these up anyway so the last four star read is actually spin the dawn and this one i did get in an owl crate box i did not do the unboxing because this was my first month with owl crate and i was so excited i literally could not wait to open it up and i did not feel like filming a video for it it's been the dawn. I just finished this the other day. This was, this was actually the last book that I read in July. This was, this was a fantastic story. It's, it's kind of, it kind of reminds me of The Wrath and the Dawn. Um, it's supposed to be like uh, Project Runway meets Mulan kind of deal, which it is. It definitely is. And I, I think the storyline's really good, but again, it's really heavy on the romance aspect of it. And I really would have liked to see more of her her sewing and her sewing abilities and some other action and stuff. And this is the first book in a series, so the next book comes out next year, I do believe. So maybe, maybe that one will be better. Who knows? But I did still give this book a four stars. And again, this cover, absolutely freaking gorgeous. Just love this. So... Yeah, that was it for my four star. All right, so finally, the grand finale, my five star reads for the month. So the first one was Thunderhead by Neil Shusterman. And this book I did think was was a little bit better than the first one. It really continues the story in the first one and it expands on it even more. So you get to learn even more about the world, even more about the size. There's a little bit more of the romance aspect in there. It becomes a little bit more developed. So that's why I gave this one five stars and not Scythe. So. And then the next one or ones is the Mortal Instruments series books three, five, and six. That's City of Glass, City of Lost Souls, and City of Heavenly Fire. I devoured these books. I thought they were so, 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 so good. Like I said, and when I talked about my, <laughs> my, the other one, um, I liked these ones a lot, lot better. So these, these were definitely excellent books. Of course, most of the Shadowhunters books are really good. Um, I did read a Kindle poetry book called The Sweetest Kind of Poison, and that is by an another booktuber on here, and that is Katie Wismer. And that book was definitely a five-star read for me. It's very short, very sweet, but it's a really personal set of poetry, and it's it takes you on this whole journey um, from before heartbreak to surviving heartbreak, and I thought it was really, really good. I breezed right through it, and you know, for anybody going through a breakup or just going through a rough time, I think I think it's definitely a good book to read. So if you guys haven't checked out Katie Wismer, please go check her out. She is an amazing booktuber and I look forward to watching her videos all the time. A Storm of Swords by George R.R. R. Martin and that is the third book in the Game of Thrones series. Uh, that one I also gave five stars. That one has probably the most action in it out of all the books so far and yeah, I mean it pretty much follows right along with the TV show. So, a Dead Girls Club by Damian Walters. That one was another Kindle arc that I received from netgalley.com. And that one I thought was so, so good. It is, 
It's basically like a thriller suspense. And I'm going to tell you right now, this book scared the crap out of me. Scared the crap out of me because I read my Kindle books right as I'm going to bed. So imagine laying in the dark and reading this like suspense thriller book that scares the crap out of you. And then you have to get up and go to the bathroom by yourself. But <laughs> it's not fun. Like I was like, okay, I'm going to go have to watch like My Little Pony or something on TV to get this book out of my head before I can sleep. Um, yeah, it, it scared the crap out of me at quite a few parts but it was really good it's basically about uh, these girls who have this club as a little as little kids and you know they talk about death and they talk about serial killers and they talk about these urban legend murderers and stuff and um, and then it's following one of these girls at, when she's an adult and she's basically being sent these things these trinkets from one of her best friends and her best friend was murdered and she says right in the beginning I killed her so but she doesn't say how she doesn't say why she doesn't say anything about it and you slowly learn over the course of the book what happened and there's a like a ghost called the red lady that's involved and it's just a really really creepy book and honestly I have like pretty much zero complaints about this. The book did end on kind of a little bit of a eh, no, but I think the rest of the book really made up for it. So if you guys get a chance, I do hope you go and check that one out. So with that being said, since this is the end of the video, I'm going to go ahead and do a little recap here. So I read 19 books. I DNF'd two books during the month. I had 13 physical books, four Kindle books, two Kindle arcs, two Audible books. I rated two books, two stars, six books, three stars, four books, four stars, and seven books at five stars. So overall, I had a pretty darn good reading month, and I only DNF two books, which is really not too bad. For me, it's actually pretty good, because usually I suffer through them, and instead of actually like putting them down and saying, I got umpteen books on my TBR that I need to read. So anyway, I hope you guys like my video and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.